Hey y'all! Well, I've had several people ask me about this little LCR meter that I've been using and I thought I would do a review on it after having used it for a month and then also do a little follow-up on this Kuwait's meter that we did a video on earlier. And I've been playing with this little Kuwait's meter for, like I said, you know, several weeks, almost probably two months now, and I'm really impressed. I mean, I also have my, you know, tried and true fluke meter, but for the money, this is just as good. I mean, I am really, you know, impressed. I've double checked it, and I kind of use it sometimes as like a backup. So, like for example, posted my KT120 schematic. One of the forum members was like, "There's no way those voltages are right." I've looked at the, you know, resistance values and. I did all the engineering math, and those voltages are off by 20% at least, and you're either using a junk meter or you just don't know how to measure voltages or something. So it's like, you know what, I'm going to double, double check this. And so it was nice to have a second meter along with my Fluke, which is a nice, you know, of course is a nice meter. It was nice to have a second one to verify, and it was the exact same voltages. And so... I don't think some people understand that those two curve charts are basically a guideline. They're not like written in stone. And maybe if you've got perfect bogey tubes that are, you know, perfection, that, that may be what they do. But the majority of the tubes manufactured are not going to be spot on to those charts. And so even drawing out load lines and all that stuff, it's not an exact science. It's not like you're working with space shuttle quality parts. They're vacuum tubes. So anyway, enough of that little rant. It's nice having a separate meter. The other thing cool this does is when you're measuring AC, it also shows you the frequency. The other cool thing that I really like is as you switch to the different things. Let me see if I can show you this. This is, I think, just really cool. As you switch to the different things, it lights up which jacks you're supposed to be using. And like if you get to, let's see if we can find one, like there, showing you you move them there. You use those two. You use that one and that one. I mean, that's really cool to me that it just simplifies the question of do I have the probes in the right places? Anyway, the video is not about this, but I wanted to have it here and while I was sitting here it's like yeah let's do a little follow-up on this little meter too but back to this Peak Atlas LCR 45 and some of you are going why would I need something like this and for the most part you don't the thing that this does that this and my flute meter doesn't do is it measures inductance and it also measures capacitors like super accurately and so especially when you're working with the little PF capacitors in something like the photo stage or anytime the capacitance is important, this thing is going to measure accurately. The other awesome thing that I've been using this for is to measure RCA cables and to make sure that when I'm using cables, like especially for a turntable, that I'm not exceeding the capacitance that the cartridge can deal with as far as the capacitance load. And so I can pull the head shell out of the turntable, plug the RCA cables in, probe the other end, and it will measure the capacitance not only through the RCA cables, but inside the turntable, the tone arm, and all of that, and make sure that like for these AT cartridges, you don't want over 200 PF or it'll start rolling off the frequency. And so this allows me to ensure that I'm using the right kind of cables. And a lot of the cables that I had that I was going to use with that new turntable, they got up to like 400 PF that would have destroyed the sound of it. And I'd be going, why didn't this thing sound? No, this turntable sounds like crap when it would have been the cables that I plugged into it. And actually, the cables that it comes with, the little cheap ones, are real low capacitance cables. So you're not going to go wrong using those. But aesthetically, almost, I, 
I wanted to have a little bit of an upgrade cable and World's Best does make some ultra low PF cables that match what the ones that come in the box are that have the nice infinol connectors on them and just, you know, they just look better. But again, that's just being kind of goofy, I guess. But, but I do think there's a part of a hi-fi system that in our brains, the aesthetics of it impact what it sounds like. And that's probably a good thing for my next money monologue. Back to the meter. Super high on both the capacitance and the resistance. These little clip probes are awesome. And like when I'm building something like my phono stage and I want to, you know, check the resistance, you just turn this little guy on. You get like, here's a resistor here. You just go clip, clip. And there's 218.1 ohms on what should be a 220 ohm resistor. So that gives you an idea. And then if you want to match them, you can go through and go, okay, this one here, that's right next to it, is a 217.9. And so you could go down like the whole row. I usually buy these 10 at a time because you get a better deal. And it's almost as cheap to buy 10 as it is to buy two. And if you got 10 of them, it's easy to go through with this little meter and match resistors so that channel to channel, there's no difference. So it's real handy for that. It's also got an inductance meter that is accurate, that shows you the inductance. You can set it for different frequencies that it's testing the inductance at. And it also shows you the DCR. Unlike this one I showed you previously, that was this little $25 piece of crap that not only is it not accurate and multiple people that I've seen online say, oh yeah, the DCR part of this is junk and it does weird stuff and then you have to externally power it so you're either plugging this thing to a USB port or you're having to you know carry around a little uh, battery brick to power the thing and this was just money thrown away this is not this is a legit company they're made in England the only thing you really have to be careful about and it warns about this several times Make sure you drain the capacitors before you test it. This thing will not handle voltage put across it. So make sure you short out the leads on the capacitor with something like, you know, something like this or get some other kind of little jumper cable and hook it across the capacitor and leave it for a few minutes so it can drain that residual voltage. And I don't know if y'all are aware of this, electrolytic cap, you can you know, drain it for a real short period of time, then you take the, the shorting lead off of it, and a couple of minutes later, and there'll be some voltage back on it. So make sure you super drain caps before you start checking them with this little guy. And I think these are 150 bucks. I'll put it up here and get them off Amazon. I'll put the link in the description. That's an affiliate link, so if you're gonna buy one of these, if you buy it through that link, doesn't cost you any more, but I get a little piece of it for showing you how awesome this thing is. So, anyway, if you guys could use something like this, this is also for you uh, plus ones. This is a great stocking stuffer for your DIY partner. So, nobody's going to say, oh, why did you get me that? They'll go, holy crap, how did you know I wanted that? So, again, this is a great stocking stuffer for your plus one for Christmas ideas. Or you can hit this to your plus one and say, hey, this would be something cool you could get me. Anyway, hope you're enjoying this short little review. Like I said, several people have asked me about this. I thought I'd do a quick follow-up on it. And also, you can read up on this. There's a little menu here. You can set it to only read resistors so it doesn't have to auto-figure out what you've hooked up to it, which speeds up the process a little bit. If you're you know, just checking resistor after resistor. There's also other things that will show you about the capacitors. I think it shows you the ESR and some other cool stuff that these kind of meters won't show you. And so, yeah, if you're hand selecting parts for your DIY project, one of these is definitely a time saver. Hope you enjoyed the short little review. If you did, please subscribe to the channel. Please like the video. Comment below if I missed something. And again, links below. Go buy it from Amazon. Helps me out. And thanks to all you Patreon folks. 
Thanks to folks that make donations to the site. Thanks to you folks that use my affiliate links. That helps the channel too. And until the next video, have a nice day. Mm -hmm.